Welcome to the Tom Dribber Show. Pat O'Neill, you here? You are concerned, Tom Dribber residents? Why I do this? Because you're concerned. <sighs> Got my Black and Decker coffee there. Actually, me and the coffee machine have come to a meeting of the minds here. It hasn't been uh, going haywire, but I've been making sure the basket bin is in there right. Don't forget, we got the debate coming up on the 30th at 6.30 right here on Channel 190, and you'll see it on our live stream, and you'll see it on uh, Facebook and YouTube, and maybe not simultaneously on Facebook and YouTube, because that gets interesting. Uh, Facebook is a pain. Uh, well, if we don't have it live on YouTube, we'll put it up on YouTube. Follow our Twitter. You should be following us on Twitter and our website. All that stuff's on the bottom of the screen. Download the live stream app. This way you can watch the debate as it happens from anywhere. On your smartphone, your tablet, your computer, your web-enabled TV, your smart TV, anywhere. That's why we're doing this. We'll be live. And we have uh, Joe Cronado and Mo Hill are confirmed. Daniel Roderick, he's uh, thinking about it. And I tell you one thing, we will have the winner of the primary in the debate. It's always worked that way. It's the only one that's televised. Chris uh, Lundy from the uh, Jersey Shore Online is moderating it. We'll get into that more. Uh, Governor Murphy is about to sign a bill that will ban all plastic bags. Even if you're buying a 10-cent one at the Hoboken uh, shop, right? It hasn't come down to Tom's River in Ocean County yet, but... In Hudson County, you go to Hoboken ShopRite, in Sarah's ShopRite, uh, you don't bring your own bags, 10 cents. You know, I don't have a problem with the plastic bag ban because, and it's really the plastic bags aren't the problem. It's the people with the plastic bag. I go to ShopRite, we get a food order, you know, we empty the plastic bags. We don't throw them out in the street, but obviously some people do. My problem is with the bill that Governor Murphy's about to sign, comes along with a 10-cent big on brown paper bags. Now, again, I don't have a problem with the plastic. I realize they're not biodegradable. They take forever to break down. But the problem is paper is recyclable. And they plant trees just for the purpose of these brown paper bags. Unlike plastic, it breaks down. It's biodegradable. What New Jersey is trying to do is force you to become more environmentally conscious, which is fine, but at a price. And the price is 10 cents for a paper bag you got your entire life for free. And I'm a double bagger. So this is, of course, like 20 cents a bag. But they say, you could carry your own bag. Well, who the F is going to carry? You're going for food or you're going to carry all these bags with you. I don't even know how many bags I need. Every time we go to ShopRite, we're going to pick up a couple of things. We pick up a way too many couple of things. Uh, and I'm not dragging these canvas bags with me because they're not very hygienic either after a while. Yeah, everything later, I got to clean the bags. Again, I can't get an explanation as to why the brown paper bags are included in this. You don't see them flying around in the streets, not like plastic. And again, I want to emphasize, plastic bags, you know, we're, we're the problem with plastic bags. We're not disposing, disposing of these properly. But yes, there is a problem with plastic. Now, some of the plastics are... You know, uh, you know, uh, recyclable. You know, I guess the next thing is water bottles. But if we're going to have a problem with brown paper bags, then let's do away with all paper. You know, I don't have newspapers, don't have envelopes, don't send me bills, don't have books because they're all paper. And they got about as much chance of getting out in the street as a brown paper bag does. Ridiculous. Going to break for commercial. You're watching the Tom's River Show. I'll be right back. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, Jersey City. Hudson County's only monument maker, serving all faiths and cemeteries. Design studio and launch inventory on site. Cemetery inscriptions and custom orders welcome. Burns Brothers Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunley Avenue, just south of Seacorkers Road. Craftsmanship that will last for all eternity. Burns Brothers, Jersey City, Albert H. Hopper, North Arlington. Visit us on the net. It takes more than a state-of-the-art medical facility to make a great hospital. It takes a team of dedicated medical professionals. That's the Jersey City Medical Center, Hudson County's number one hospital. Medical teams consisting of New Jersey's top doctors, magnet award-winning nurses, and accomplished hospital associates, all committed to your good health. That's what you have at the Jersey City Medical Center. Make Hudson County's number one hospital your first choice. 
visit us on the web at BarnabasHealth.org. We're back. Band the bag. Band the bag. Again, I have a problem with the plastic. With the brown paper bag? Come on. And like all the supermarkets are on, you know, all in line with this. Yeah, we agree, we agree. We agree to charge you 10 cents a bag that we gave you for free forever. Which has our store's name on it. Well, let's get to more pertinent information here. Because we're going to talk about uh, teachers uh, being laid off, possibly 31. Um, what's my other story here? Murphy and Shared Services, something we've been talking about for a couple of years on the Tom's River Show, and legal gun ownership. But let's get into the schools. The Tom's River Regional has to come up with $2.8 million. They're fighting with the state to try to get $2.8 million restored. They are going to be school funding changes over the next six years. That's going to affect every community. But what we really need to do is figure out how we can change this, how do we make it uh, equitable for all um, the 21 counties in the state, and how we make it uh, affordable for all the municipalities. There's a lot of work to do here, because we're still operating as it's the 1930s, 1940s, and it's a far different world now than it was then. It's the exact same methods we're using. Now, Tom's River Regional is proposing, if they don't get this $2.8 million, I want to okay, emphasize here, they need $2.8 million on a budget that's $243 million. They're talking a difference of about 1.25% that's what they're missing out of their budget. And the sky is effing falling over this. Now, they're proposing to lay off 77 full-time jobs. There will be 58 teachers, 55 part-time jobs, uh, approximately 55 part-time, like assistant coaches, that sort of thing. Uh, there will be some secretarial positions they're talking about laying off. And with retirements, it breaks down to 31 teachers that would be laid off. Again, I want to emphasize... It's a cut this year of 1.25%. They're looking for $2.8 million to save the sky from falling. Now, if you had to cut 1% or so out of your household budget, would you have to uh, stop buying clothes for your kid? You know, uh, one point, that's like a cable bill going up. And it doesn't go up 1%, but we, we absorb that. You make a cut somewhere else, you're a little smarter, you use coupons. Again, the Tom's River Regional School District is crying over 1.25 or so percent cut in this year's budget. And teachers are going to go after school programs will have to be stopped. The prosecutor, a new guy here, said, well, if you do away with these after school programs, the kids will turn into criminals. Give me an effing break here. We're talking 1.25% cut in this year's budget. Now, if you're going to project down the road, you know what? There's going to be some serious problems, but there's going to be ways to work around it. There are a lot of problems with the school funding per student. There are some point parts of Jersey where it's like 5,600 a year to educate a student. In Tom's River, I think it's uh, $15,182 per student. An hour away in Jersey City, it is $20,300 per student, 35% more. It's an hour away. Now, listen, everything costs more the closer you get to the Gorilla Building, the Empire State Building, no matter, no matter how you look at it. But there's got to be some way. You know, I'm pretty sure with teacher contracts, I never looked into it, but I'm pretty sure what we, have, what we pay a teacher in Jersey City is pretty much in line with what a Tom, Tom Driver student uh, teacher gets paid. So there, there's an issue on why it costs so much money in Jersey City as opposed to, like, Cumberland County. Now, that's what the state has to look at. And what it comes down to is kingdoms. Now, uh, Jersey City, they're looking out, I think, over the course of six years, they're going to be out, like, $700 million. You know, it, they're a serious from they, They're put in a payroll tax. But that's not going to cover all of it. But somehow we need to get a handle on the cost of education in New Jersey. There are 49 other states that seem to have handles on this. Maybe New York isn't one of them. But, you know, Maryland, Pennsylvania, they're substantially cheaper than us. And they're not like, you know, educating bumpkins down there. They're smart people in Maryland and Pennsylvania. The school funding has to be addressed. It's the driving factor in property taxes. Somehow... In 2019, 2020, 
we have to figure another way of doing this. Again, we keep doing it the same way we did it in the 30s and the 40s. Cuts need to be made, simple as that. There has to be another formula that's used. Start with superintendents. Do we need, I forget how many superintendents there were. There was like a ridiculous amount of them. We did a story on this. Not only do we have a ridiculous amount of superintendents, you have the assistant superintendent or deputy superintendents, and the superintendent has two or three of these guys. And I forget the amount we talked about in a previous Tom's River show was like $170 million a year. Well, you know what? That's the first place to look. Do we need all these superintendents and assistant superintendents? Do we need 500? And 90 statewide school districts? No. One of the things we're going to talk about today is Governor Murphy is actually moving towards shared services. Yeah, we need to do some consolidation with school districts. We've got more districts than municipalities. And every one of those districts, you've got a school superintendent. You've got the assistant superintendent. You've got all this friggin' redundancy statewide. And whether it's in Cumberland County, Hudson County, Ocean County, Monmouth County, it's all affecting your taxes. And that has to be addressed now. It is a huge part. It's like 75% of your, your tax bill. Um, you know, Murphy's just signed a bill uh, on foreclosure, rules and regulations, focusing on the banks. Uh, you know, it makes it more difficult for a bank to foreclose on a New Jersey homeowner. It isn't the banks that are the problem. It's the cost of being in New Jersey. That has to be addressed. Biggest cost is school. We have to figure out another way to fund these. Again, we don't need 590 school districts. We don't need 590 school superintendents and an assortment of assistant and deputy superintendents. You're paying for all that. It's gotten to the point where it is busting your property tax bill. That has to be looked at. And the sky isn't falling. You just have to rework your expenses. All right, we're going to break for commercial. You're watching the Tom's River Show. I'll be right back. Good Friend Self Storage in North Bergen, New Jersey is a fully climate controlled facility equipped with state of the art security, packing supplies, a refer friend program, and multiple loading docks convenient for commercial use. Located just off of Route 3 at 4301 Tunnelly Avenue, Route 1 and 9. Call 201 867 2444 or visit us on the web today. Good Friend Self Storage, let us be your good friend. I'll be back. You'll be watching. I'll be Pat O'Melia, your concerned Tom Dribber resident, Seaside Heights resident, wherever you're watching. Really, whatever we're talking, Tom Dribber applies to almost any other municipality. Governor Murphy, yeah, I was surprised to find this out, has thrown out a $15 million carrot to various municipalities to shift services from municipalities to the county. What a wonderful idea. Something we've been talking about on this show for two years. Shared services. Again, like I said with the school, huge expense. Shared services. We got 565 municipalities in the state of New Jersey. And each one of them come along with a mayor and a police chief and a council or commissioner board. Health and human services, public safety, all these departments in every one of the 565 municipalities. So, yeah, is there a place to do some shared services? Yes, there is. Is there a place for consolidation? Yes, there is. But sure, are we doing that? Nope, we're not. So Murphy's throwing out a $15 million carrot here. Uh, and there actually are two shared service czars that he appointed a year ago. Now, I know he spoke about it. I didn't know he appointed to. And I don't know what the F they were doing for the last year, but they finally came out with some recommendation. Now, these two czars, who are probably making a pretty good bank, uh, payroll-wise, have come up with the exact same things I spoke about. Now, Sheila Oliver, who heads up the DCA, Department of uh, uh, Community Affairs, uh, she said the most recommended so far for shared services between municipalities going to the county, moving the services to the county, many people have said, why do we have county government? Well, there's a use for county government. A lot of people said we should do away with Well, they run the courts, they run the prisons. Yeah, there's a lot of things. Sheriff departments, there's reason for the county government. But we can utilize the county government far more than we do because there is a tremendous amount of redundancy in the state of New Jersey. Now, listen, he's talking about municipalities dealing with the county. Well, you know, the county should deal with the state. The state should deal with municipalities. What is the best and most efficient way to perform a government function in the state of New Jersey? 
Now, what Sheila Oliver is saying, um, that the most shared service suggestion is Department of Public Works. Wow, really? Did anybody study this for you? Um, police departments, fire departments, tax collection services. Of course, every town has them. Now, there's no volunteer police departments. You've got volunteer fire departments, but there are expenses still involved with the volunteer fire department. Yes, there should be consolidation with that. Now, in Tom's River, you got a lot of small communities around Tom's River. you got the whole group of the Barry Islands. Should we consolidate there? Should we have shared services? <laughs> yes. You know, you look at Seaside Heights and Seaside Park. They have their own police force, their own chief of police, everything, everything. They got their own mayor. They got everything duplicated. They're very small. Now, if anything, if we were going to shared service or consolidate, now Seaside Heights, way ahead, uh, Mayor Boz, the County of Ocean is now doing 9-11 dispatch for Seaside Heights. And it'll save Seaside Heights, I think uh, Chris Boz uh, said something like three, 400000 a year. Good job, Chris Voss. But I, mean, I just seen Chris at the shop right yesterday. I wasn't my talkative self because my knees were killing me yesterday. Uh, I was moving equipment from studio to studio. Manage, I have bad knees as they are. Once I finish my dental work, hopefully by the end of this month, I will go on to my knees. Knees are killing me, and I just had dental work done, and I didn't want to walk anymore. So I'm standing in one part of the shop right near Chris Boss comes in. Hey, Pat, you know, I got to get out of the store. I got to rest my knees. But uh, Chris Boss, good move on his part. But there are so many other things that we can consolidate. And I didn't have to review this for a year. These are like in your face things we should be shared servicing. You know, the, the other thing, Sheila Oliver said, again, the director of the uh, DCA, well, they brought up schools and uh, correction services, you know, the, the jails and sheriff services, those sort of things. Yes, they should all be on the table. I'm going to throw a few more at you there, Sheila. <laughs> Not like Sheila Oliver. Uh, parks. You really, you look at Ocean County and the municipalities. They all got parks departments. Ocean County's got parks departments. The state's got parks departments. Everybody's got parks departments. We're all going around with our parks. And we all got crews and we all got equipment. And we all paid for it. Well, you paid for it. That's the kind of thing we need to figure out how to do shared services. You know, let Tom's River do work for the state and build the state. Or if the state does work for Tom's River or Ocean County, figure out the best and most efficient way to maintain the parks or cultural affairs or trash and recycling. Everybody, again, has their own deal on that. The more we can cover and spread out the expenses, the better it is for you. There is nothing that should not be on the table. And overall, we have to look at the kingdoms. What are the kingdoms? 565 of them in New Jersey, the municipalities. Now, some of these kingdoms are minute. Yeah, I, I'm looking at East Newark and Guttenberg in Hudson County. You know, can easily be absorbed into uh, Guttenberg, absorbed into North Bergen, East Newark, absorbed into Newark, wherever you want to absorb East Newark. If somebody can find East Newark, absorb it in there. But you have a ton of those in Ocean County, too, where in each one of those little kingdoms, they have a mayor they have a commissioner or a council form of government, they have the police, they have, they have all these departments, the city clerk, the city collection, the, the township or town or borough collection, all of those redundancies are there. So yes, now Murphy with the two czars should empower these czars to make mandates, because the state loves doing mandates. They love unfunded mandates. That has to stop also. But a mandate has to, you have to look at the municipalities and say, guys, you're across the street from one another. Why do you both have a police department? Why do you both have cultural affairs? Why do you both have senior services? You know, you got the two municipalities, you got the county, and you got the state. We have to figure out the better way of administering these governmental services. And like I said, you're just looking at parts, the park departments. State's got one, municipality's got one, the county's got one, and you're paying for all three of them. They need to work together. There has to be a better formula than the kingdoms that we have now. And I think Governor Murphy is starting to realize that. You want to cut some expenses? There, it's, it can be done. You just need real good leadership. All right, we're going to break for commercial. You're watching the Tom Dribber Show. I'll be right back. Rama Jewelers, located in the Lyndhurst Shopping Center at 413 Valley Brook Avenue, Lyndhurst. 
Come for all your jeweler needs at Rama Jewelers, where you will find a fine selection of necklaces, earrings, rings, and bracelets. Choose from one of our complete sets, our many signature items, or find the perfect engagement ring. Come on down, that's Rama Jewelers at 413 Valley Brook Ave, Lyndhurst. Call 201-939-5784 or visit us online today. Newport, the luxury waterfront community on the Hudson River, offers the quality of life you deserve in 10 high-rise rental towers with amenities such as the on-site Newport Path Subway, light rail and ferry service, Newport Town Square, three playgrounds, dog run, upscale restaurants, retail giants like Sears, JCPenney, Macy's, and Target. Morton Williams Supermarket is just outside your front door. A health and fitness club, spa, skating rink, and medical facilities are also on site. NewportNJ.com Enjoy the New York skyline from Newport Town Square. Manhattan is just one path stop away or quick ride through the Holland Tunnel. Nursery and private elementary schools all on site. 12 screen movie theater at the Newport Center Mall. Want to visit Newport? Stay at the Western or Marriott Hotel. Go to NewportNJ.com for details. Newport has luxurious towers, great restaurants, shopping, New York skyline views, schools, playgrounds, a marina and yacht club, gym, spa, fine wine, fine living. It's incredible. It's you. NewportNJ.com. Newport. Live like you want. I'm back again, and you're still here. Tom Drew Michelle, Pat O'Melia, your concerned citizen. If you're a citizen that is a legal gun owner, I don't own a gun. Um, probably should. You should all be able to protect your home, but that's, that's an individual choice. Should you have a gun? I don't have a problem with gun ownership. I don't have a problem with legal gun ownership. I have a problem with illegal gun ownership. Cory Booker, who is running for, will be running for president, is running for president. He is former mayor of Newark, uh, state senator from New Jersey. I like sending mayors to Washington or mayors to Trenton because these guys understand budgets. They know what it's like to have to lay off PD or fire. They understand that. Those are the guys I like in Trenton. Uh, and other people who never ran a municipality, now are in Trenton, they're working on budgets. Uh, what Cory Booker is proposing like cars, you need a driver's license to drive a car. You should have a gun, a license to buy a gun. You know, we look at undocumented immigrants here, and they're driving cars. So you don't really need a license to drive one. You want to drive one. Legally, you need one. You know, I started driving when I was 12. Of course, I didn't have a license then. I didn't get my license until I got married. I had to take a tour of the state of New Jersey and pay a ton of tickets that I had accumulated over those years. But eventually, I got my license. Uh, so you don't need a license to drive a car. You want to break the law, you can drive a car. Uh, that's the whole thing here with legal gun ownership as opposed to illegal gun ownership. Everything I'm going to talk about here that Cory Booker is proposing is targeting legal gun owners. Now, yes, occasionally a legal gun owner uh, has some problem with his wife or the guy next door, and he may shoot somebody. But as far as crimes committed with illegal guns as opposed to legal, huge difference. It's like drugs. You know, we're cracking down on opioids and how physicians can prescribe them. The difference between illegal op opioids and legal opioids is huge, huge difference on what's being used and abused. But, you know, it's so easy to go after the, the legal people. Instead of addressing the real problem, illegal. So what Corey's book is proposing is a gun license. You have to have a license. You have to go through testing. You have to show you can handle a gun. You know, shoot, and you got a good aim. I, I, I suppose that's what he's talking about. Background checks on all purchases. I think we do that now. Uh, banning assault weapons. I agree. Again, I'm not a gun owner, but do you need an AK-47 at home? Probably not. Are you going to go hunting with an AK-47? No. So I don't, we had an assault weapon ban that expired. If I'm not mistaken, it expired under President Obama. If people keep talking about Trump and the NRA, I think that expi expired under Obama. There would be a ban on bump stocks, high-capacity magazines. I don't think anybody has a problem with that. But you want to have a, you know, a 45 or 9 millimeter, you should be allowed to have that. You can only purchase one gun a month. I don't know who's purchasing more than one gun a month, but I don't have a problem with that. That's cool. If you've ever been convicted of domestic abuse, no gun for you, legally. 
Uh, you, have, you have a restraining order. No gun for you. Repealing a law that protects manufacturers and gun dealers from lawsuits. You know, if this, uh, the Colt or Browning uh, manufactured gun and was used in a commission of a crime, you, could, you can't sue them. Same thing with dealers. Well, that's like with automobiles. A car was used in a commission of a crime. You're not going after GM or Ford. Again, it's illegal activities. Now, the people who are committing the crimes like with cars, usually not using their own car. It's a stolen car. Or uh, like you know, they'll use a rental if they want to do some terrorist crap. They're not using their own car, which would probably be cheaper if you use your own car. All this onus is put on legal gun ownership. And they are not the problem. At least I don't see them as the problem. It's illegal guns. Now, we keep making it harder and harder for a law-abiding citizen in the United States, or in this case, New Jersey, to own a gun to defend his home. Now, if you're worried about the bad guy breaking in your house, and he may have a gun, you should be allowed gun ownership. As long as you're an upstanding uh, citizen, you haven't committed crimes or anything like you, you've got some felonies. You know, we're talking about only second chances. You know, there's nothing about the second chance felons here or ex-convicts. Everything is on the legal gun owner. Everything legal. We want to take away protections for the manufacturer or the dealer. You know, the dealer selling a gun to a legal gun owner, you know, and that, I'm going to assume that's never the problem. You know, the legal gun owner, very seldom do you hear a uh, crime committed by the guy that owns the gun. Now, it does happen. But percentage-wise, compared to crimes that are committed with illegal gun ownership, <laughs> huge. Now, we have protections under the Constitution of the right to bear arms. Should we have a federal standard for gun purchases? Yeah, because in some states, you know, you buy a gun at the gas station. There should be some way we regulate that, but not regulate it to the extent that it makes it almost impossible. And again, not regulate it only on and aimed only at legal gun owners. Again, I am not a gun owner. But everything that's ever proposed in the gun world is aimed at legal gun owners. They're not the problem. It's the illegal people. It's people who are committing crimes. And if, I'm guaranteeing they're not buying these guns legally in New Jersey. And there are cases where they're buying them in other states and they're shipping them here to New Jersey, or there's a whole black market uh, underground there. You know, we're, we're fighting all these wars on crime. We can't seem to stop that. Again, we'll create laws and enforce laws on legal gun owners. Now they're talking about one of the, one of the things is like raising the price on uh, ammunition. Well, I, 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 I guess I don't have a problem with that, as long as we don't make the, guy, the gun owner jump through hoops on that. But really, why are we making it prohibitive again for the illegal gun owner? The problem is the ones who have illegal guns. All right, we're at a show. That's my gun pitch. Again, not a gun owner. You'll be good. You'll be safe. Don't forget, we got the debate on May the 30th right here on Comcast Channel 190 and all our streaming networks. You'll be good. You'll be safe. I'll talk to you next week. Good night.